good morning students we are going to discuss today the chapter of class plus 2 lost spring stories of stolen childhood we'll learn about the author first the author of this chapter is anne jung who was born in 1964 in raurkela and spent her childhood and adolescence in hyderabad she received her education in hyderabad and in united states of america she is an author journalist and columnist she belongs to an aristocratic family of poets both her parents were writers her most noted work is unveiling india and in this work of hers she deals with the detailed chronicle situations indian women have to face she focuses on children from deprived background and she shows in her works the poverty and the traditions and exploitations these poor children have to go through and she is noted for her lively and vivid descriptions in the present piece of writing she analyzes the grinding poverty and traditions which condemns the children to a life of exploitation this chapter has two parts in the first part the author met to a boy named saibe alam and he was searching for something in the garbage dump when she met him she asked him why he was doing that the boy answered that he had nothing to do except doing that then she suggested him to go to school and the boy answered muttering that there was no school in his neighborhood when the narrator promised half jokingly to him that if she would build a school will he be able to come to that the boy was willing to go to school and he promised that he will definitely go to school if he found one but the narrator realized that her promise was a hollow one and that was not meant to be fulfilled the boy after a few days came running to her, running up to her and asked if the school was ready again the narrator felt embarrassed thinking that she had made a hollow promise to the boy and his life was full of such hollow promises and his and the world of that particular boy and of all the boys like him was a bleak one was full of gloom and darkness after months of knowing him she asked him his name and when she came to know that his name was saibe alam meaning lord of universe she felt surprised and she felt startled to know that and started thinking if the boy would come to know the meaning of his name how embarrassed he would feel and how painful it will be for him she noticed that the boy used to go with an army of barefoot boys for searching gold in the garbage when one day she met them and asked one of them why he was not wearing chappals he answered that his mother did not bring them down from the shelf instantly the other adds that had she had she brought the chappals down he would not have worn them even then because it was a tradition in their community to remain barefoot and the third boy added that he wanted to have a pair of chappal or shoes because he had never owned that type of chappals and shoes in his entire life hearing this the narrator came to know the perpetual state of poverty of such boys who were living in this type of exploited life 
she remembered a story once a man told him that a boy was passing in front of the temple he stayed there he prayed to god that he might not lose his pair of chappals uh, 30 years later when the narrator visited the same place she saw she saw that the temple was in dissolution it was not in an in appropriate condition and there was a new priest and when she noticed that a young boy was there wearing uniform and shoes and socks she came to know that the living standard of some people had improved there but still there are some people who were living in the same state <coughs> of poverty now she came to know about the place the boy belonged to as i have earlier told that they belonged to bangladesh dhaka in 1971 and she came there in order to have in order to earn livelihood because the storm had swept all their crop and swept away their house also the place was beautiful but the beauty cannot fill the stomach so to fill that to maintain the survival they need food and the food was not possible to get there so they migrated to the place and that is known as simapuri and it is totally a wilderness and it is in the periphery of delhi not only he but there were 10000 rag pickers who were living in that place at that place without having the amenities without having any type of facilities no uh, without drainage system without home without water but the only thing they had was the ration card due to which they were able to buy grain at a low price and somehow they were able to maintain their life lives when she asked one of the ladies one of the women there in uh, w- seeing her in the tattered sarees why she was wearing such a sari the women answered that she had the only one and when she asked her why they migrated from their beautiful place then then the then the woman answered that it was better to live here and then to that beautiful place because this place was giving them region to live this place was able uh, to give them livelihood when the narrator asked a group of women in tattered sarees why they had left their beautiful land of green answered that they wanted to live at such a place where they can make their livelihood and keep their stomach filled with food so it was better to leave the place that was not able to uh, uh, earn livelihood livelihood for them and survival in simapuri means rag picking and this rag picking has meaning different for the elders and to the children for children it is just a wonder it means when the narrator asked saibe alam if he find if he fi- find some rupee if find a rupee from the dump does he stop sc- scrounging from there then he answered in negation and he told him that it was a wonder it was a type of surprise for him and in order to find more in a hope to find more coins he keep on scrounging the garbage so it was a double meaning the garbage for it means to their parents that means gabi has a meaning different from what it means to their parents for children it is wrapped in wonder for the elders it is a means of survival after that one <coughs> winter morning the narrator saw saibe alam standing in front of the fenced gate of the neighborhood club and he was watching two young men dressed in white playing tennis <coughs> when she asked him what he was doing there he told that he liked tennis 
and when nobody was there the gatekeeper <coughs> allows him to enter there and to play sai is wearing tennis shoes that look strange over his discolored shirt and shorts someone gave them to me he says in a manner of an explanation the fact that they are discarded shoes of some rich boy who perhaps refused to wear them because of a hole in one of them does not bother him it means it does not bother him who was the owner of the shoes and who gave it to them but it gave them to him but the only thing the boy knew was that he was able to have those discolored pair of shoes and it was set, uh, quite satisfactory for him <coughs> for one who has walked barefoot even shoes with a hole is a dream come true it means that uh, if a person is not having uh, shoes at all and if he uh, gets the one with a hole that means it was just like a dream come true for him but the game he is watching so intently is out of his reach but saibi alam was watching two young men playing tennis but that game was quite out of reach for him <clears throat> one morning the narrator saw saibi alam on his way to a milk booth <clears throat> he was having a steel canister in his hand and he told the narrator that he was working now he had got a job and for that he was paid 800 rupees and all his meals <clears throat> when the narrator asked him does he like the job then the face that was having a carefree look actually got grim and sad he was not happy to walk under someone he just wanted to have a work of his own but it was not possible for him <clears throat> the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag he would carry so lightly over his shoulder that means the bag was his and the thing the work he was doing does not belong him and he was not his own master he was no longer his own master this type of helplessness has been shown by the narrator of the poor people in this chapter and how <clears throat> helpless they are how helplessly they are living and the type of circumstances they are living are not good are not actually suitable for a human being so this was the first part of the chapter thank you for listening